Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Springtime has finally arrived in Toronto after a number of false starts. I think it is finally here. I was going to run on the treadmill, but I've been having some issues with pain in my back. Mm. So I just don't think I can handle the impact mm. of running. I don't, don't really want to chance mm. it. So I'm out for a walk. Hope we have a little chat. I'm wearing, I, I gotta show you this, uh, this running fashion that I have going on. I'm wearing my um, gray and red t-shirt that I wore for my last half marathon that I did, which was a couple of years ago now. And then I've got my, my funky blue running tights and my, my Grinch socks and my pink shoes. So the running fashion is on point. Say hi. Hi. George made this video himself. When we're driving on the 401 on the highway, he likes to make his own dash cam videos. So he's showing you his video and it's a very good video, right? So the current situation in Ontario with regards to the pandemic and quarantines and you know, the economy and all the rest of it. Uh, today is May the 20th and our number of cases is currently sitting at around 82,000 across all of Canada. Uh, pretty sure we're going to hit 100,000 at some point, which is tragic. Um, I believe our number of deaths is sitting at around 5,000. I'm not too sure of that number. It might be close to 6,000 actually. We are being told by politicians at various levels of government that we are on the downward slope of the coronavirus curve. But every day we keep seeing the numbers of new cases that seem to be quite large. So I don't really know what to make of that. Things in the province have started opening up in a way that does not really make a whole lot of sense to me. So for instance, we're being told that we can have housekeepers and nannies. You know, these are people who potentially work in multiple households. So we can, we can have them in our homes again. We're being told that that is safe. And yet we are still being told that we shouldn't invite family members who have been isolating and who haven't been in other homes. I can't really work out the logic behind all of it, but anyway, my family is choosing to continue social distancing because we just don't feel like it's safe to not. We do know that the schools in Ontario are closed for the remainder of the school year. That announcement was made yesterday. Really not all that surprising. I mean, there's a month left of the school year. So at this point, it doesn't really seem to be worthwhile to open up the schools again. Uh, so the kids are going to be remote learning until the end of the school year. I don't know if we'll even be back in September or not. We'll just have to wait and see. So the remote learning has been going, I guess, as well as we can expect. Is it working? I guess that depends on your definition of working. It depends on the kid. You know, my younger son, James, is so good at self-directing his learning. He gets onto his computer and he logs onto his classroom and he does his thing. And it's just not something I've had to push him to do. He just, he just kind of does it, which has been fantastic. But for this guy here, it's, uh, it's a little bit more challenging because his learning is so dependent on interaction with his teachers. You know, he's in a special education program. You know, it's not just a case of, you know, log on and do these worksheets, you know, do these decimals or, you know, read this book and answer the questions. You know, it's not all about that for him. The main component of George's education is the connections that he has with the people he's with. You know, yes, it's about learning academic skills, but it's also about learning how to apply them and learning why they're important in life. You know, without those connections and that, that hands-on experience that he has during his regular school day, remote learning is just not as beneficial to him as it might be to a lot of other kids. That's not to say that he's not putting in a lot of hard work and effort, he really is. You know, and honestly, his teachers are just phenomenal. I cannot say enough about the staff at 
Georgia school. They are just amazing. Ultimately, it's kids like George, you know, the kids who have the disabilities, who are going to suffer the most as a result of this quarantining and this remote learning and everything else. And it's not something that I blame anybody for. It's just, you know, this is just the way the chips have fallen this year. It's, it's just rough. It's hard for these kids. They're trying their best and the teachers are doing everything they can. Parents are doing everything they can. Ultimately, I am blessed to have a kid like George. He is, you know, he is just so sweet. He is the most kind, loving, you know, amazing fella. He has this aura of, of magic about him. So I'm just thankful to be surrounded by the magic Aww. that is George and the vibrance and the dynamic element that comes with James. I'm having a tough time. I'm not loving this, but I recognize that in the grand scheme of things, it could be a whole lot worse. So what I'd really love to know is how quarantines are going for other people in other places. I know everything is kind of different depending on where you are in the world. So if you have a quarantine story to tell or you know if you if you want to share just what the lockdown and quarantine rules are like in your country right now and you know just how you're doing you know let me know down below in the comments i'd love to hear from you i will sign out for now but i will see you guys again soon take care of yourselves stay healthy stay happy wash your hands take care